Hello, this is my first clip of many that I will be making on critical thinking and um, fallacies and logic and reasoning. Um, this all started actually uh, with this book uh, called, here I'll show it to you. Oops, uh, you gotta. And um, it's called Assassination Science. Experts speak out on the death of John F. Kennedy. It's written by this guy. I've got a picture of him. Let's see. Dr. James Fetzer, who um, works on um, writing uh, material on what's called the philosophy of science. And I was just looking through his book, and he has a chapter here, beginning on page 85 of his book, on um, critical thinking. And this is sort of what was the impetus that got me thinking that I should include this in my course. Uh, he, this is what he writes. It's in um, this chapter called Thinking Critically About JFK's Assassination by Dr. James H. Fetzer, Ph.D. Okay, and this is what he writes. I'll read it to you. Students who wonder whether the study of critical thinking has benefits in coping with problems in the world may want to consider the following critique of an article by Robert Artwall, uh, MD, medical doctor, entitled Conspiracy, Forensic Science, and Common Sense that recently appeared in the Journal of the American Medical Association dated the 24th, 31st of March, 1993, pages 1,540-1,543. It affords a nice uh, illustration of uncritical thinking on an important subject that affects everyone. It also illustrates the fallacy of supposing that, in, that uh, articles that appear in reputable sources, such as JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, are therefore credible. This article is surely not. And so what he does is he goes through this uh, article that appeared in the Journal of the American Medical Association, written by this uh, doctor, uh, Artwall, and then critiques it. And so that got me sort of thinking, saying, hmm, where else have I heard about critical thinking? And so I looked through some of my books, and I, for instance, in this book called Economics, talked about fallacies in economic uh, reasoning, which I'll talk about as well, to, well, to some extent, like the fallacy of composition and so on. Uh, I also looked a lot in marketing research, so in this book called Marketing Research, uh, in, in particular in the area pertaining to uh, um, forming questions f on your questionnaire, doing surveys, and how um, these uh, fallacies can affect um, uh, the answers that people give. And there's, there, there are biased questions that can kind of lead people to answer the question in one way or another. I also consulted this book as well, uh, called Marketing Research by Mal Holtra, which I used when I was in graduate school. Um, don't worry, I, it, it's not that hard. I, I, I didn't use any formulas from it, because they do a lot of uh, statistics in there, so no, no math. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that from looking at a book originally about the JFK assassination and investigating it, this one, get a little picture of you know, this one, um, Dr. Fetzer's book. It got me thinking that, you know, th th this he's absolutely right, that critical thinking is important for students. And it and is definitely important when studying marketing, right, because marketing research is a foundation of doing um, your marketing uh, strategy construction, right? You need to know your customers, how to figure out, you know, how to develop your marketing mix and also relevant for economics as well, as I will show you momentarily. Um, and since the example that they used in that economics book pertained to monetary inflation, and since inflation is a topic in your book, uh, it uh, 
sort of uh, fills in nicely about how the fallacy of composition uh, applies as well. So we can look at the economics and the marketing strategy uh, and marketing research as, uh, as, as good examples, as real world examples of, of these uh, things. So in this is, again is clip number one in this series. So let me just, um, I, I picked 12 actually. I decided to, I was going to do 10 originally, but I found two more that looked kind of cool, so I put them in. So the first one is fallacy of composition. Okay, and this pertains to, uh, I'm going to explain all these more and more detail in later clips, but I just, I just want to quickly cover them. Fa uh, in sort of the, the, the quick, broad brush in, in this, uh, um, I'm at five minutes, 10 minute clip. Fallacy composition is basically when you falsely assume that what is true for a, a small group somehow is also holds true for the entire group, uh, the bigger part. In other words, what's, what's true for the individual is then being assumed to be true for the whole population, and that might not necessarily be true. That's why it's called a fallacy of composition. So uh, that's the first one. The second one is called, yeah, is called um, Petitio Principii, uh, also called begging the question or leading questions. Uh, this, of course, um, Fetzer's example in his book it pertains to the O.J. Simpson trial. So that this is a leading questions can be used by lawyers. So there's some legal applications. To this. Um, what was the other one? Oh yes, and they also are some um, comes up quite a bit in marketing research as well. Um, when you're asking questions about uh, people's buying um, of products, whether they like something or not, you can create leading questions to lead them to you know, saying that they like it or not saying it. So, so this is very relevant as well to marketing and as I said also to law. Three was appeal to authority. This uh, it can be a fallacy or not a fallacy depending upon um, you know, what the, the expert that you're appealing to, what their actual skill set is. There can also be problems like, for instance, appealing to authority could possibly be an unnecessary argument, as we'll discuss, or it also could be impossible to appeal to authority if no authorities exist or it's you know, highly disputed. Here, then we're talking about the straw man argument, which basically is sort of like creating a caricature, an exaggerated sort of false version of your opponent's argument and then attacking that sort of fake version and then claiming that that disproves their actual real argument. So it's, a, it's like a setup. You set up this sort of false, you know, uh, weak, uh, exaggerated, rid ridiculous version of the person's real argument then you attack it. You, you attack the, the ridiculous version and then claim that that somehow proves that the, the original uh, argument was not um, uh, correct. The fifth one is ad hominem. This is when you attack the person or their motives or their character. Okay, or you attack you know irrelevant personal characteristics. Okay, or you appeal to emotions or prejudices or special interests. You say stuff like, oh the only reason so and so said that was because you know some some sort of special interests, like they're, they, you know, you would expect them to say something like that because they're biased. They have some sort of agenda or something. The slippery slope one is, is, um, I found the example of the um, marijuana legalization issue, um, which talks about basically how if you do one thing, then it's going to cause all these, you know, 700 other bad things to happen. So therefore, we shouldn't do the first thing. Um, so we'll talk about that. Um, Quickly, in my last minute, seven is about bifurcation or black and white fouls, which pertains to giving only two choices when actually more choices exist. Non sequitur is basically when something doesn't follow in logic, right? Okay, it's like it's like you have basically a premise and a conclusion that are completely unrelated. Actually, I'm going to have to make another clip. I'm r I've run out of time. I'll come back and quickly cover what 9, 10, 11, 12 is about, and then go into much more detail about and give some examples of what each one means and how they apply to business and economics and so on.